Houston, we are good to launch. T minus 30 seconds till go time. Final checks, everybody, let's go. Fuel, check, we're topped off at 1,200 gallons. Temperature, check, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Thrusters, check, 50,000 newtons per square meter. All right, all right, let's go. Hold on. Johnson! Johnson! What did you say, Johnson? Meters? Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Abort! Abort! Units, units, units. Isn't it crazy how humans are smart enough to subscribe to knowledge raters, but we can't even agree on a way to measure stuff? Why are units so damn confusing? Let's set sail for standardized units! Just roll with it. Just come on. <laughs> Chen Shi Huang, the feared emperor of the Qin Dynasty was famous for something other than burying all his servants with him in an Indiana Jones grave. He standardized measuring units once and for all, and these units were widely used in East Asian cultures for thousands of years. The Hebrews had a unit of measurement called a cubit in the Old Testament too. God gave Noah the dimensions for the ark in cubits. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. Genesis 6.15. This would translate to around this much in modern measurements, which might be a bit small to carry a pair of all the animals of the world, don't you think? Fuck. Ah, uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. Cubits are really not a good unit of measurement. Defined as the length from the elbow to fingertips, the cubit was used extensively around the Mediterranean and West Asia. Here's the problem. People tend to come in all different sizes. For instance, her cubit would be around this big, while his cubit would be around yay big. I bet you can't watch Endgame again without thinking about fucking cubits. If you consider how Romans, Egyptians, and Persians have different physical sizes, the cubit falls apart really quickly. Hell, even Blood Brothers have different arm lengths. The cubit was in no way a standardized unit. Yes, we now need precise units to measure time, pressure, and temperature in the complicated world we live in, but humans before the modern era couldn't care less about this stuff. After all, guesstimating the weight of grain, length of clothing, and area of a farm was about as sophisticated as things would ever get. As long as measurements were accurate enough to avoid a bloody medieval murder during tax collection or trading, things were pretty chill back then. Thus, most measurement units were about weight and length. Length and weight are based in physically observable properties that you could see or feel. Lots of attempts have been made throughout history to objectively quantify and standardize these measurements. For instance, they would pick out a pretty looking stick or rock, replicate it, and then distribute it around. Unfortunately, the new ruler of a regime would choose his own favorite stick or rock and insist that everybody else exclusively use that. A new standardized unit would be created with every dynasty in Eastern Asia after the Qin Dynasty. Europe had it worse. As centralization started happening in Europe, every country just made up its own measure of units. Britain, in particular, started a new collection of units including feet, yards, pounds, barrels, gallons, and acres that are still being used to this very day. Originally written into the very Magna Carta in the 13th century, Queen Elizabeth I ordered it to be used across the board when Britain started morphing into an empire in the 16th century. As you can tell by how our friends in Britain and America still use these units in the 21st century, it takes a lot to change how a country measures stuff. Something like a goddamn revolution. The French Revolution was the perfect opportunity to overturn these silly primitive units. The bright-eyed revolutionaries wanted to start a new era of enlightenment based on facts and logic, while crushing the bad practices of the past once and for all. This didn't just end with the government. They wanted to change the whole world. This was when the gust of mighty revolution blew through the world of units as well. Units should be scientific, logical, and easy. In 1799, the metric system was born. Unlike the previous natural and arbitrary units based on approximate dimensions of a common man's foot, shoulder length, or beer barrel, 
metric system was very precise and did not rely upon random everyday objects. One meter was defined as the distance from the North Pole to the equator divided by 10 million. Divide a meter by 100 and you get a centimeter. Multiply a meter by 1000 and you get a kilometer. If you put water at 4 degrees Celsius into a perfect cube with each side being 1 centimeter, you get 1 gram. You're not exactly going to consistently discover centimeters and grams in nature, but it's perfectly straightforward and logical. Time too was measured logically. The day is 86,400 seconds, 1440 minutes, and 24 hours. For big brain people like us running on facts and logic, a proper measurement of time is of paramount importance. The revolutionaries actually wanted to go a step further and change a week to be 10 days. The French Republican calendar would make a month have three weeks, a year would have 360 days, and five days would be public holidays. Sounds decent, right? Well, the peasants really didn't appreciate how this new calendar screwed with their church days and revolted. The French Republican calendar was canned just 12 years after its birth because y'all just don't mess with Jesus time. The more radical reforms like the French Republican calendar were rolled back. But the metric system was too convenient and logical to be forgotten. The French peasants eventually adopted it over a long period of time. Other European countries started adopting the metric system one by one. In 1840, France had enough of this half-measure nonsense and straight-up outlawed any measurement units other than the metric system like a champ. In 1875, 17 countries signed the Treaty of the Meter at the International Bureau of Weights and Measurements Conference. Even paranoid Russia implemented the metric system in 1925, and Europe was finally almost pure. Almost. France really wanted to create a beautiful, complete world with standardized units, and Britain really wanted to give France an OCD attack out of spite. Britain doubled down and defined its wacky units in a more sophisticated manner. The units that can measure French tiers truly were so powerful that only the mightiest empire could pull it off. It's almost as if the units were... Imperial. You gotta hand it to them, that's a cool ass name. Even the mighty British Empire eventually, mostly, caved to the straightforward metric system. Once a British hallmark, imperial units like yards and feet were mostly laughed away as an embarrassing history of mankind like, this elephant is five sticks long. Surprisingly, there are still three primitive countries that use this outdated way of measuring things. Myanmar, Liberia, and the United States of America? The most advanced country of all time? What? All three use slightly modified versions of the original imperial units, but America uses a knockoff version called the United States Customary System, or Freedom Units. Let's unravel this, shall we? America started as a British colony, and so it does seem reasonable that the Pilgrims would use imperial units. You would never believe it based on how America somehow manages to get itself involved in all foreign affairs like a nosy, tiresome Karen, but America was mostly isolationist up until its rise as world superpower after World War II. Americans quarantined themselves off from the rest of the world way before 2020, happily living off the wonderfully self-sufficient North American continent that provided more than enough food, natural resources, and god bless territory. They really didn't give a fuck about the European chicanery happening across the Atlantic. Yeah, America knew that the metric system was logical and scientific, blah blah blah. The federal government made a half-assed attempt to adopt the metric system, but that quickly got shot down because it went against our democratic principles. You could almost say that the Americans didn't give an inch in case the government would take a kilometer. Also, by the time that globalization actually started kicking in, America was the world superpower. Weaker countries that wanted the opportunity to do business with America were forced to bow down to the king. The whole fucking world could unite under the logic of the metric system for all America cared, fuck all, and especially so for some particular industries under America's thumb. Monitors, TVs, and smartphones are still all measured in inches. Planes still measure how high up they are in terms of feet. The oil market, the prize jewel firmly under American control that requires payment in US dollars, essentially has its industry-wide standardized units measuring barrels and gallons. If y'all have a problem with that, maybe you should try being the best in the world for once. Fucking under achievers. Freedom units are better, you know. They're more closely related to actual American life. One mile is the distance that the average ancient Roman soldier would travel after walking 1,000 steps. One acre is the area that the average cow would be able to plow in a day. 
One foot is literally the size of the average person's foot, and one gallon is one big bowl. How intuitive! How wonderful! Wouldn't you agree? All right, fine. I can't defend this. Fucking Americans and their freedom units. Inches, feet, yard, and miles are all horrendous hybrid units just to measure length. They all originate from different standards, which makes unit conversion a complete nightmare. Furthermore, units like acres, easily measured by length times length, use yet another my way or the highway standard, really making things unnecessarily inconvenient. You think this is bad? Imagine trying to measure weight like pounds or three-dimensional units like gallons, and the whole thing literally becomes stage four cancer. There really is no easy solution here. On December 11th, 1998, NASA proudly launched the Mars Climate Orbiter into the skies. Nine months later, on September 23rd, 1999, the orbiter started its orbit around Mars. Alas, they screwed up the thruster calculations and shit went bad really quick. The program was built for kilograms, but they accidentally put pounds in. Thus, insufficient fuel was provided to the thrusters, and the orbiter fell out of the sky, crashed and burned, flushing 125 million hard-earned taxpayer dollars down the toilet of NASA tears. Yes, I know that the intro was a bit misleading, but I got your attention this far, didn't I? Several other embarrassing major accidents occurred due to a mismatch in units, and it still causes inconveniences all around to this day. It's really confusing even for us Americans, and particularly so when dealing with countries that don't adhere to this nonsense. The metric system was constantly redefined by more scientific, precise, and absolute standards as time went on. For instance, one meter originally came from the circumference of the Earth, yeah? But because the Earth isn't actually a perfect sphere, a meter is now defined by how far light travels in 1,299,792,458th of a second. A second is defined by how long it takes for a cesium-133 atom to vibrate that many times. I'm not reading that. Fuck you, scriptwriter David Bradford. Unlike the past, where units were defined by everyday objects focusing on length and volume, the metric system uses absolute constants like the speed of light and time. Seems like us big brain monkeys did all right for ourselves, yeah? This has been your captain, David Bradford from Knowledge Raiders, and turn on your bell notifications to join our next Knowledge Raiding.